Welcome. In some denominations, you'd make a trip to the pastor's study for answers to the really tough questions. Well, let's see what we can do here. Hello. Merry meet and blessed be. Depending on how you came here, I'm Iden Odinson, High Priest of the Temple of Gaia, or Bishop Cal Lippitt of the Universal Episcopal Church. Either way, welcome. Because it doesn't matter how you got here. Just like it doesn't matter the name you use to address the divine. Unfortunately, it makes a big deal to some people. And it makes a big deal, such a big deal to some people, that they use that as a, an excuse to harm others. And there aren't that many religious groups in the world who have not been guilty of that at some time. At least by the actions of some of their more fanatical people. I can't think of the people at the root of the tradition ever encouraging it but that people at the fringe have. I do know that the Prophet Muhammad wrote about the need to respect the people of the book. The people of the book being people such as Christians and Jews who have the same root as Muslims. Or for that matter, there's the story of Jesus meeting with the centurion. And if you've studied the history of Rome, you know that that centurion had to have been a Mithraist. It was the official religion of the Roman army. The Roman soldiers could have any religion they wanted, but they were going to include Mithraism. And most others at one time didn't particularly care. But Christians have had, oh, all, ever so many wars and so have everybody else. We can't forget the Crusades, we can't forget the Hundred Years' War, the Thirty Years' War, or the wars that were necessary, such as Prince Eugene driving the uh, Turks and the Ottoman Empire out of Austria. Yeah. All these wars over what kind of worship, what kind of religion, and even what branch of what sub-branch of what religion. Rhode Island has the distinction of being the only one of the original colonies where it was always legal to be Jewish. The cathedral the Roman Catholic Cathedral in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania has the distinction of having once been the only place in the English-speaking world where it was legal to say Mass, etc. In second grade, I remember, dear Mrs. Nelson at Harley Hopkins School in Hopkins, Minnesota, teaching us how the King of England set up his own church and decided that everybody was going to worship there and any other church was going to be against the law. And so these wonderful pilgrims got on board the Mayflower and sailed over to the to America and set up their own colony and we learned about the happy pilgrims with their religious freedom. Then in fifth grade we started learning about the unhappy Puritans and how repressive they were. 
It was sometime in college that somebody admitted that these happy pilgrims and these repressive Puritans were the same people. And to this day, we can go on to see TV preachers talk about religious freedom. When they're talking about religious freedom, they actually mean can somebody in a school assembly where attendance is required, can somebody stand up and offer a Christian prayer? Or in a town meeting, can it be led and initiated with an invocation that is a Christian prayer. Now my question is, in both cases, what about a Wiccan prayer? What about a Jewish prayer? What about a Muslim prayer? What about a Buddhist prayer? What about a Shinto prayer? We've got all those and more in these United States. Can we have them too? And I say that because of a letter that I received. It wasn't addressed to me, but it was sh shared with many people by Bishop Mark Lawrence the, from South Carolina, a uh, really great guy and somebody I really look up to. The man has guts and he takes a stand. And this is a letter from somebody else who has guts and takes a stand. The Most Reverend Dr. Munir Hana Anis. He has two titles. Bishop of the Episcopal slash Anglican Diocese of Egypt with North Africa and the Horn of Africa. And President Bishop of the Episcopal slash Anglican pro province of Jerusalem in the Middle East. Yeah. He's the top guy for Cairo and the top guy for Jerusalem. Now how's that for an interesting little dichotomy? And for a number of other places where Christianity may not necessarily be the dominant religion. And he's there. And here is a letter that he wrote that Bishop Lawrence was good enough to pass on to me and so many others. My dear brothers and sisters, greeting in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The situation in Egypt is very serious. I do not know where this situation will take us. I feel that Egypt is at the verge of violent demonstrations, another revolution, or civil war. We do not know what is going to happen, but we know that we are at the edge of something drastic. One year ago, Dr. Mohammed Mursi became the president of Egypt following 18 months of turbulence in the socio-economic and political situation in Egypt. Many had hoped that Egypt would move forward for the better. However, things have become worse and are now very difficult. Egyptians have become divided between Islamists and non-Islamists. A constitution that was written and approved in haste was one of the main reasons for these divisions. Other reasons were the exclusion of moderates and non-Islamists from participation in the political life and the appointment of Islamists as ministers in the cabinet and other prominent posts. These divisions led to instability, lack of security, and many demonstrations which in turn badly affected the economy and tourism. People started to complain from the rise of food prices, the frequent power cuts and the sectarian clashes, and lately the lack of fuel. Two weeks ago there were demonstrations in several governorates in objection to the appointment of new governors who are known Islamists. A new movement called Tamarad or Rebellion was formed last April and they called for massive demonstration against the president and the government of the 30, on the 30th of June. They claimed to have gathered the signatures of 15 million supporters. One week ago, 
the Islamists made big demonstrations in support of the president. They warned the supporters of Tamarad against demonstrating on the 30th of June. Anyone who will sprinkle water at the president will be sprinkled with blood, said one of the supporters of the president. This means that there will be bloodshed if people try to force the president to step down. Some Islamists also threatened the Christians if they participated in the demonstrations. Others produced a fatwa saying that those who would demonstrate are kafirun or godless and deserve to be fought against. The Grand Imam of Al-Azhar stated that anyone can demonstrate to express his or her views and this has nothing to do with faith. His Ho Holiness Pope Tawadros II of the Coptic Orthodox Church said everyone is free to express his or her views. Yesterday in an attempt to calm the situation the President delivered a 2.5 hour speech. Unfortunately the speech stirred the people even more. Demonstrations started yesterday at uh, Tahrir Square and in the province of Mansoura where dozens were injured and two people were killed. Now the military tanks have started to move in to protect the important sites. What is going to happen on the 30th of June? Do we not know? We do not know. All what we know is that when emotions run high, anything can happen. However, we trust that God is in control and we are in his hands. Two days ago during his visit to Egypt, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, encouraged us by using St. Paul's words while in the middle of a storm. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Acts 27 verse 22. I'm writing this to request your prayers for Egypt and for the people of Egypt. May the Lord bless you. That was dated the 27th of June. He has my prayers. I hope he has your prayers by whatever name of deity you address. The group that I used to be part of is known for having a saying, freedom of religion means all religion. And I am not above coming up with a saying of my own. And that is, when tyrants rule, those who disagree will suffer. But those who, di who suffer most are the ones who don't agree enough. Just ask Leon Trotsky. And if you look up Leon Trotsky and find out who he is and was, you'll see what I mean. For that matter, you could ask Ernst Grum. He's another one. Look him up. When tyrants rule, those who suffer the most so often are those who don't agree enough. Some of the worst wars have been fought over not agreeing enough. After all, all of Europe was practically depopulated over argument over whether it was going to be Protestant or Catholic. And that's to say nothing of the wars that have been fought over which brand of Protestant or for that matter, which brand of Catholic? Look in your history and you'll see what I mean. And of course, wars over which brand of Muslim. Yeshua Bar Joseph one time 
had an encounter with a centurion. Now the centurion, to have become a centurion, I can tell you he probably was a very good Mithraist. And you know what? Jesus said, even in Israel have I not seen such faith. That who had respect for each other, even though they were from different paths. There are all kinds of stories like that if you look for them. Including a, an encounter between Lao Tzu and Confucius. And several others. You probably have figured out that I've learned how to drink from more than one well. Archbishop Fulton Sheen once said, It is not a unity of religion I seek, but a unity of religious people. We may not be able to sit in the same pew, but we can stand together. I'm probably doing a little bit of a paraphrasing on that, but you can still see Life is Worth Living on TV if you know which cable ch channel to go to. And a lot of his episodes are, after all these years, still worth our while. And he did recognize and consider as valid so many of the other paths. I could only imagine what could be accomplished if he were around today. But that's what we need. Is for us to be able to put our differences aside. Well, not even aside. In perspective. That's better. Put our differences in perspective and work together for what we need together. I may not exactly follow the way that you would follow, and you may not exactly follow the way that I would follow, but we can walk together. And I think that's what's going to bring us the really good stuff. Watch and see. Blessed be. I'll see you next week. Yes, next week. This is going to be a weekly thing. Blessed be. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.